into Wilmington by a frequent flyer area. Change an evaporator on a Goodman air handler. I put this air handler in about, let's see, coming up on four years ago, I guess, or just past four years ago. And it's the last one of my Goodman evaporators from that era that have not leaked. So we'll go change it because it's leaking now. Old variable speed AEPF air handler. So stay tuned for the HVAC fun. Here's our unit for the day. We're going to pump it down. I'm going to take these two valve caps off, put my gauges on here, and we're going to pump all the refrigerant into the condenser so we can cut their evaporator loose. Go ahead and switch it out. All right, we have our gauge hooked up to the suction line here. And what we'll do is we'll depress the contactor manually to run the refrigerant out of the lines and evaporator into the condenser. And then we can go ahead and cut the evaporator loose, drain and copper, and get ready for the new evaporator. I have put a jumper from the orange, which is the reversing valve, low voltage wire, to the red on the defrost board to give it 24 volts. It switched once I did that. I'm gonna go ahead and power things up here. Pump it down, which I've been trying to do now for way too long. So I can get onto the evaporator change out. That's much better. We have our system evacuated. All the refrigerants located in the heat pump now. We're gonna head upstairs and cut the evaporator free along with the drain from the evaporator. Here's our Goodman AEPF air handler. Variable speed back from 2009. Not a whole lot of room up here. You got the return ducts run behind here. You got TXV. TXV is required to get the 15 sear on this unit. So I gotta cut the drain free down here and get that copper and TXV taken apart so we can slide the old coil out, put the new coil in. We have our drain disconnected here. And we'll probably replace a trap because it's full of some nasty items. So get a new trap, pretty easy to do. Save us a little service call for later. We'll go ahead and disconnect the male adapter and elbow there so we can reuse, because we have to reuse a drain pan. You don't get a new drain pan, you just get a coil. So we can take the doors off of this thing and start working on the copper taking the TXV off. There is our TXV. We're gonna unbolt it over here. I have to cut this off, put it on here. Whether or not we'll be able to leave that on. I might replace the whole fitting if I have another one. Maybe not, we'll see. I might just undo the flare and then re reinstall that and we're done. But I gotta go ahead and take these loose so I can slide the coil out and get the new one up here. All right, our TXV and our copper is disconnected. Go ahead and set them out of the way after stopping up the end so nothing gets into it. Set it on top, pull our other coil out. We have our coil doors off. Like I said, the copper is separated. There's a little latch that goes right here. You unscrew it and it comes off too. And this whole thing just slides out. You're saving the drain pan. You can sort of tip the coil into that drain pan and slide the whole assembly back in when we have the new coil up here. Here is our new aluminum coil, fresh from East Coast Metal Distributors, ready to not leak for years and years and years. Here is our new aluminum coil in place, looking beautiful and wonderful. Making our drain pan look like hell. Now I'm gonna put the doors back on. We'll start our brazing here, and then our just bolting on a TXV, and then we can do our pressure test. We have our door back on now, letting pressure off of the coil. There is nitrogen pressure on the coil, so you have to be careful. We'll cut it off right here. Make sure the swage is right with the compact swage. All we have to do on the on the TXV is bolt it back on, so that's pretty easy stuff. Only brazing joint will be right here. We'll put our existing piece right into there, braze it up. On the back here, as you see back there, there is a Schrader port on that particular coil. If you are new to brazing or don't have a lot of experience brazing, go ahead and take that Schrader core out. Uh, as the years go by, you'll, you'll have no problem in brazing it up with the Schrader core in there. I do wrap a few rags on the inside, so it should be well protected. But if you're new to it and you feel like you might be dwelling on a single joint for a while, 
go ahead and take it out. There's our joint all finished up there. And as it turned out, the suction line from the coil was 7 8 And my line was 3 quarters. So what I did is I actually took my 3 quarter swage and put it into my line coming in right here. Swaged it out a little bit so it was a nice flush fit. Same, same thing as having a reducing coupling except we're on the spot and we can go ahead and take care of it right here without having to involve a coupling. Pieces of pipe or anything like that, we can go ahead and take care of it. So I'm going to go put this flare connection back on and go, uh, go down and turn on the nitrogen. We have our connections back on. Keeping in mind that on the TXV, there would have been a Teflon O-ring we took out and make sure that's put back. Just cause some headache if you don't do it. We're going to go down and put nitrogen on the unit. Get a little bit of bubbles on our flare and compression fitting. See if we're good to go. We are putting some nitrogen pressure on the unit. Up to about 90 pounds. When I put pressure in, I have both valves open. Either side of the TXV. I throttle it here. And when I get to the point which I want to shut things off, I'll shut it off on these. That way I put an equal amount of pressure on both sides of the TXV. I don't have to worry about being unequal, bleeding through slowly, making it look like it's leaking. Go ahead and do it right the first time so you don't have to worry about it. I'll put about 150 pounds on here and shut it off, and then we'll check for leaks. Uh, another tip, I usually put about 20 or 30 pounds on it and stop it initially in case there's some kind of egregious leak somewhere. You see it just plummeting right away so you don't waste a bunch of nitrogen. I got my pro bubble out, put some bubbles on the flare and actually the compression fitting and the braze joint. I'm not as concerned about the compression fitting and the braze joint. But the flares, I know when they leak, they can be very subtle when they leak. You can actually leak so slowly the nitrogen won't pick it up. So I like to spray those with bubbles just to make sure. As we see, there's no bubbles coming from that joint, top or bottom. So I think we're good to go. We'll let it sit for a while while I clean some stuff up and tie in the drain. Our pressure test is done. We have the vacuum on it now. Down for a couple of minutes, we're down at about 2625. Let it run for a while while I finish the drain upstairs and clean up. Then come down and hopefully it'll be finished. We have our drain tied back in here. I put a vent in the drain so we won't have any problems with double trapping. Thanks again, Mr. Ralph, TNN Services. I have to take this off in a minute and put some water in the trap, prime it up, and then we'll be done with the drain. Head downstairs and see if our vacuum is finished because we're pretty much done up here. Clean up some of my debris over here, and I'll be ready. So the vacuum update, I'm about to go find the drain. We're at 66 microns, it's pretty good. I'll shut that down, it'll rise quite a bit, but we're just about finished. So I'll start it up here in a minute and show you guys how it works. 